So this morning was very special for me. Um, when my children, who are now grown and have children of their own, when they were little, um, we had a two-story house, and they would get up at the wee hours of the morning on Christmas Day. I mean, like, five or four a.m. And they were not allowed to come down until they heard Christmas music playing. And so they would sit there at the top of the stairs, just like mom and dad get up. And um, finally, uh, Randy, we would go down and get our coffee, and then Randy would play like a, a song. There, just like that. <laughs> and they would come running down, all excited. Okay, maybe that was you this morning, maybe not. Um, but most of you received a gift from somebody, okay, or you will. And what do you do when you get a gift? Let's talk about something you do. First, you usually read the card, right? At least your mom and dad used to make you read the card. You wanted to open the gift, but you read the card, find out who gave you, right? You look at the, either the tag or the card, find out who gave you the gift. Then you unwrap the gift. And some of us like to rip the paper off. I came real close to doing that today, and others take our time. And then, after we see the gift, what do we do? We go play with it, try it on, you know, put it somewhere. Right. Well, you know what? Before we do that, maybe your mom or dad would say, you need to thank Aunt so-and-so or thank you for that gift. So we should thank the giver, right? Usually we do. We're supposed to. Uh, the gift was given because that person cares about you and loves you, and they wanted you to have something special. And finally, you get to use the gift. Play with it, try it on, plan to use that gift in some way. Maybe it's a beautiful picture that you can hang up or something you needed. You need to do something, though, with that gift. Well, let's see. Read the card, unwrap the gift, really look at the gift, thank the giver, and then do something with that gift. In our story today, all of this happens. We have Joseph and Mary, faithful Jewish parents. And when Ju Jesus is about 40 days old, they make this um, pilgrimage to the temple to do the required sacrifices for Mary's purification and to dedicate Jesus to the God at the temple. Uh, it's a way of saying thanks to God for this newborn child. And as they walk into the temple, they are surprised to be greeted by two very excited senior citizens, okay? Uh, Simeon and Anna. They were very faithful. They were there serving God and worshiping God and uh, trusting that God had a plan. Even though they were getting really old, they just said, you know, we know God promised a Messiah, but we're just going to trust God and see what happens. And I love that the scripture mentions that they are old. We're never too old to worship God, never too old to serve, okay? And so I love that picture of the young parents, the baby, and these older adults all there in the church worshiping together. That's the way church should be. All of us are important. God needs disciples of all ages, okay? So all of us are important. I was seeing that lately. Um, I didn't get a chance to participate, but many of you did. We um, helped with a ministry called Sleep in Heavenly Peace, and I saw a video and pictures of, of that event where they made beds for people, children that did not have beds in Frederick. And so I saw all ages helping with that process of building those beds. And so they were all working together. Well, along with Mary and Joseph, who went to the temple to give thanks to the giver, okay, Simeon and Anna were full of gratitude for this gift of Jesus. And while this, there wasn't a gift card on Jesus, the Bible does say that Mary pondered the words of the angel and the shepherds and the wise men. She knew that this was God, this child was God's gift to the whole world. No, there wasn't a gift card, but there was a written scripture that prophesied the coming Messiah. So there was words that were written down that they read. Simeon and Anna knew who this gift was and who gave the gift. Now about using that gift. How do we use Jesus? Well, this is one way. In Ephesians 5, 1 to, 1 to 2, it says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So the gift of Jesus is that we are now beloved children as we follow Christ, and we can live a life of love. We can live and love like Jesus, because Jesus was our example. And so that's, that's a lot to ask. Some of you are saying, well, I don't know if I can be like Jesus. But remember, God's given you the gifts and the power inside of you. 
We call it the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit. And it'll help you to love even when it's hard, even when you don't know what to do. God will guide you because God promises. God's a promise keeper. Jesus has another name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. What a gift that is. So that had me thinking, what does God want for Christmas? On our, uh, our fireplace, we have stockings for my daughter, son-in-law, um, my grandson, and for Randy and I, and I always have one up for Jesus. And I'm always thinking, wonder what God would want. Well, the Bible tells us that God wants a love relationship with us. God wants us to be loved, and Jesus taught us to love God and love each other. You know, when we do that, when we love each other, that makes God smile. That's a gift to God. God loves that when we get along with each other and we love each other and help each other. God also wants joy. Just like parents get excited when their children open a gift that they bought, um, God gets excited when we're, we're living that life that we should live, when we're living that life of peace and we have hope and we have joy and we're helping other people. That is God's blessing and gift to God uh, when we live that way. God's joyful. And then God desires our worship and praise. As we understand who God is and God's great, for love, great love for us, we want to respond in thanksgiving and praise. This is the gift we give back to God, not just at Christmas, but every day. Anna and Simeon were faithfully worshiping and serving God, and it was not surprising that they were the first ones to recognize this Jesus as God's gift. If we could give God a gift for Christmas, Brook Hill Church, can you imagine how wonderful it would be if God's face would just light up, if he opened a box with a bunch of dearly loved disciples loving each other and working together, helping each other, lifting each other up when someone's suffering or struggling? You know, we have a lot of people now going through hard times, and I'm so blessed with people that are sending cards and calling and making meals and doing things. That makes God joyful to know that we are being the church he's called us to be. I love that. You know, so even if you've given out all your gifts already, you can still give God that gift, the gift of your life. So my prayer for us all is that we would read the card, that is, read God's love story in the Bible, know who God really is, see how God wants us to live, it's all in there. The Bible is fascinating. There's so much words to us about how to live and how much we're loved. It tells us about Jesus who gave his life for us, sacrificial love. Then we need to take time to open the gifts that God gives us and enjoy them. Okay, every day we can thank God for those gifts, the gift of life, of breath, of love and friendship, of an opportunity to serve and care um, I think every day we can do that. This is the key idea of this story with Anna and Simeon. They trusted God, and they rejoiced with this gift of knowing Jesus, the promised Savior, the Savior of the world. We spent four weeks in Advent looking for gifts of hope and peace and joy and love. My challenge to you is to unwrap a gift each day, whatever that gift is. It might be a beautiful sunrise. It might be um, a conversation. It might be a, a reconciliation of someone that you've been estranged from. Forgiveness. There's so many gifts God wants to give us. So today, let's gift God with our praise and thanksgiving as we receive that gift of love. Help us then to share that love with the whole world. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Giving God we are full of joy as we receive again the gift of your son, Jesus. Show us how to live a life of love. It's not easy in this world that is so broken, so full of people that are struggling, people that don't know you, Lord. And you have put us in this world as light to show what love looks like. What does caring look like? What does forgiveness look like? What does serving look like? Help us to live and love like Jesus so much that the world will be loved to you. Oh God, that's what we pray for every, not just Brook Hill, for this whole world. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.